must give, you know, massive props. This one did not throw up once and he ate all day long for two and a half months and I was very, very proud. Did it taste okay or was it just horrible? A lot of it was very delicious. I think the only day it was tough was there's a scene when the bread does arrive later. Yeah. Right. And my character is very upset about him not getting to try the bread and so gorges on it. I call it bread gate. That was a long day. That was bread a long gate. day of only, yeah. only bread. I was genuinely concerned about him. Hi, I'm Nick. Hi, I'm Mark. Hi, I'm Anya. And this is Notes on a Scene. You haven't touched your food. There, there is no food. We join this scene at a point in the story where the wheels have not yet come off. We're still, as an audience, trying to work out who these people are, what these relationships are, and specifically this table. They want to be seen in this exclusive club. They want to belong to this family, to this movement with this cult leader of Chef Slowick up there. There's so much this human need to belong on some level. Are you going to try it? No. No? No. This is great stuff. So what I'm trying is, this is the breadless bread plate part of the menu. So we've all been delivered no bread, but just the condiments and sauces that would come with them. I ate quite a lot of oil. That was what I was had in my little spoon right there. I was just <laughs> licking oil throughout the day. How did it taste? Uh, oily. Um. Delicious. <laughs> I don't know, I remember, after, you know when you have too much oil in your mouth after a while, you're, like, it starts to feel a bit funny in there? Yeah. yeah. I started to have that feeling occasionally. <laughs> I'm gonna stop it just to tell you how long we spent trying to get the sound effect right for the glass smashing. You know the obvious if something really scary happens and you do the, the strings. Of, and yeah. uh, and uh, so we did want to create an unease whenever we could. <laughs> With that, I think it took us about two weeks to get the sound effect right of going back and forth just for a glass smash. But if you hear it in a big cinema speaker, it's really cool. It was worth it. But also, if you listen to this one, so like I did a little bit of a squeal. <laughs> I did that maybe like 79 times in ADR really? to get the right level of squeal. Oh, squeal. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, two weeks of a glass smash and a yes, moment. For one little moment. For one little moment. That was a total accident. I did. I... We were in the edit with Chris Tellison. I wanted to be kind of over Chef's shoulder when, when he comes down to and, and experience that fear of like when the head teacher is coming over to you at your table. But it was all lasting a bit too long, so I wanted someone to foreshorten it, but I didn't want it to interrupt at the moment. And then Chris found this little look from Paul. If you just keep looking, stuff I didn't even notice on the monitor on the time, mm -hmm. you just find little nuggets of gold that everybody was given all the time. And Paul just gave me this lovely little kind of teacher's pet look. Perfect. That, you know, you're in trouble with the teacher, <laughs> and I just loved it. And it's interesting also because the way that this restaurant is set up, we the diners are in our own little worlds at each table, but we are all out there on a stage. Yep. And then you've got Chef Slowix, wherever he walks, all heads turn, and he is presenting from his own stage. So mm -hmm. it really is all performances within performances yep. within pretension. I remember saying to Mark, I feel like I need to have my back to Chef Slowick because that's the way that I feel about it and he should be a presence behind me and it's a choice. The back problems I now have <laughs> <laughs> from twisting into this S shape so I could look at Rafe because also when Chef Slowick speaks, it's a monologue. So I just hold this while. position and be like, I'm fine. <laughs> I still maintain it was a good choice. It was, still, it was a I'm fantastic still, like, choice. Yeah, but it just shuffled that chair around a bit. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm so sorry. You haven't touched your food. There, there is no food. I love Margot very, very much because she is the character that I've played that's the most comfortable in their skin. I've never been a particularly passive aggressive person mm -hmm. and I deeply enjoyed being <laughs> like passive aggressive. And so on this, I'm just gonna write um, sass level. 1,000. <laughs> I'm just going to keep writing those. Yeah, let's you go. Can, you can feel how much you're enjoying <laughs> it, and the character is enjoying the moment. There is no food. No, no, this is food. So, um, lots more food to come. Don't want to fill up. That would not be possible. I've precisely designed the portions to account for that, so... I remember a conversation that you and I had where you said Margot is an enigma that we as the audience are trying to figure out. Yeah. And that kind of led me down a path of, okay, I need to figure out who this individual is at her core. And it yeah. also made me feel a lot 
calmer because I think I initially went in wanting to know like exactly who she was in every yeah. single moment and then I was like oh of course it is a performance within a performance and allowing that curtain to rise and fall yeah. was really helpful and fun. As the story re reveals itself you kind of realize that they're not what they appear to be at all so it was very fun to watch that veil drop occasionally and then yeah, quite. go straight back up yeah. so quickly it was That's like really it true. was incredible. You won't fill up. Please eat. The menu only makes sense if you eat. But you told us not to eat. That is not what I meant, madam. These two characters who obviously, for all intents and purposes, take an instant loathing to one another. He wants this character to eat. You don't want him to tell you what to do. And yet, eye contact is, right to you. Yeah. And actually there's an enjoyment of the connection. There's already a dance going on between. The central conversation had to be this conflict stroke connection between this character, Margot, this, this force of light, uh, and this character who sees nothing but darkness, because I knew that actually you up against Rafe would be absolutely fascinating, would feel like a really equal combative, and yet had this underlying warmth and connection because of that shared empathy that both of you have. You can yeah. both see that foundation, I think, really works, and we build out to those other relationships from, from that place. That is not what I meant, madam. You know it. Well, Thank you for your concern, but I am perfectly capable of deciding when I eat and what. There's a joint empathy because they both work in the service industry. I think both of us enjoy our scenes together, but I think the characters weirdly enjoy discourse because there's a massive part of Chef, I think, that wants to be told no. Yeah. Or that wants yeah. somebody that's not just, you know, following everything that he says all the time and potentially she's been holding her tongue for a little bit. And so having somebody to just immediately be able to be like, no. And an intellectual, an intellectual equal yeah. also perhaps that Chef also feels seen by this character. Something he's such a commodity, such a badge of honor. I am perfectly capable of deciding when I eat and what. Some wonderful acting from Nick Holt right oh, there. Oh, no, that's, that's me going, oh, I'm embarrassed. This isn't going well. Oh, that's no. just like, and the dream Little has just eye. shattered. Oof, this is awkward. The fact that you're defying him, he's my hero. I just want everything to go smoothly. Just say, please, and him to take me dear in God, just, like just, close eat, friends just drink the oil. And the fact um, that you're not playing his game suddenly is yeah, disastrous for me. the worst date. Can we to go back to Rafe and yeah. be like, how he manages to be so warm and intimidating and look straight through your soul all at the same time yeah. is incredible yeah. to watch. His approach is all kind of mon monastic, you know, that there's mm -hmm. this kind of monk in his art form. A good 90% of the performance is in that just meticulously, everything is perfect and smooth. It's like, I would love to have a, a little kind of bedtime story from Chef Slowick. Yeah, really to he's at much. peace. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. That little thank you that I gave just before he walked off. Thank you. I remember doing it and thinking, oh God, Ray Fiennes is gonna think I'm an absolute brat because that was <laughs> not scripted. And I was just like, oh God, oh God, oh God. But I'm, I'm glad you kept it in because it meant that it worked. Oh, and um, yeah. Yep, so thanks, thanks for that. Christ, that was humiliating. Humiliating? Yeah. Tyler, the guy's a prick. He goes and um, has a deep moment with uh, mummy. I said, can you go up and kiss her? And uh, we went for the take and he went down to kiss her and then changed his mind and just put his head on. And I think it was completely in the moment. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Um, it was just a perfect rafism of just a character who cannot show that much intimacy, a character who cannot show that much effect. And with all that luck, it just speaks so much of what we'll hear about and that troubled past of the character is so eloquent in that one gesture. I just loved it as a choice. Another excellent moment by Janet McTeer. I know, right? I mean, the oh, side eye yeah. action. Peter Deming's photography, I'll just give my little mm. shout out to him. Of course, we hadn't put these skies in at this point with the green screen, so he had to kind of imagine that from shots we shot earlier and light the foreground so that it would match when the green screen went. And the way that he will frame it here, this is beautiful foreground action, but there's also, you get this lovely insight into, into Nick's humiliation upstage. So it makes the frame so rich. Something that um, Mark does was he wanted us all on stage essentially the whole time and improvising because you never knew when you were going to be caught on camera, um, which was such a fascinating way of working. But the other wonderful thing, which I've not experienced in any other film, is usually if it's someone else's close up, you'll go and rest in your trailer. 
We never left this set. We were constantly on set, improvising or watching everybody else around us. And it was such a supportive environment. We got such great stuff out of that in the edit of those extra layers from what I was finding from you. There's one point where, um, where the camera is primarily over with Amy and John Leguizamo's characters. And yet I've got the two of you in the background. And I'm just seeing this dynamic of the two of you having the most lovely date yeah. and just connected. It's one of those things where if you just rack the focus and see that going, you think, oh, they look, what a lovely young couple they are. <laughs> well, I mean, so we we, we committed to the improv like pretty hardcore the first couple of days and then there was definitely a certain point where like Nick take it away. Well ultimately <laughs> we were like we couldn't continue to improvise that deeply. Then we just started kind of getting to know each other through improv Good. stories about the characters that would be partially true but then also partially False. So you'd yell cut and then we'd say, okay, I think this bit was true, I think this bit was a lie, oh, I think this bit was fabricated, yeah. I think whatever, and we got to know each other. You were playing Balderdash on camera. Kind That's of, yeah. there, was, there was one day when it was like, I remember telling you a story about being force fed like yeah. cheese or an onion as like as punishment as a child and this is why I don't like cheese anymore because it gave me nightmares but I can eat an onion like an apple and just random yeah, things. Like, like, we'd be like, what is going on in your We life? know each other to I'm a like, very oh, bizarre me, degree. <laughs> That's false, yeah. That's good. false, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't it's worry, I'm not like revealing my... Uh, <laughs> inner <laughs> trauma. Take it in three, my friends! Yes, sir! All the actors that played yeah. all the chefs were incredible in their ability to kind of be so intimidating, kind of soldiers of, yeah. of chef. You had them do training. It, well, it was yeah. all chore like choreographed faultlessly. Yeah, we had this one week boot camp with, you know, Lauren Candelo, our second AD, and John Ben Hayes in our local a brilliant chef from, from Savannah, and also overseen by Dominique Crenn, of course, you know, three Michelin star, you know, literally the only woman in America still to have three Michelin stars. Getting that kind of uh, backup in the kitchen was a massive thing for me to, yeah. to make sure we had that authenticity. Literally everything they're doing is completely correct for, for whatever course is being prepared. Interestingly, I don't think any of us necessarily describe ourselves as foodies, but I do, I do remember um, we have really hard jobs, you know, we have to watch uh, Chef's Table and, and go to nice restaurants as research. Um, <laughs> but I remember when Dominique came on set, all of us were really starstruck oh, yeah, because too. we'd yeah. been obsessed. We're like, yeah. she's a rock star like, as well. Don't, really don't mess is. it up, yeah, don't mess it up. Yeah. Something that I thought was really interesting about how we're such ritualistic creatures, and that was something that you talked about a lot at the very beginning, where it's like, we do not switch tables. Mm -hmm. Even when we yeah. leave, when something shocking happens, we stay in our position yep. because that's our only grasp of familiarity or it makes us feel safe. There were so many um, you know, psychological studies on that where when things become threatening in this restaurant, there's so many studies backing it up that given the choice of can you believe that something is really bad could be happening here or do you just want to pretend it's all you know, all a show. Yeah. Every, you know, nine out of ten people will just go, "It's a show," and choose to believe that as a, you know, rather than faced up to an uncomfortable truth. I think we get saved in these movies when they get dark because Mark hired very kind, wonderful people. So it's quite shocking when staff or the chefs will look so serious, and then they yell yeah. cut, and it's like. So how's your book? Like, how are you doing today? Yeah. Are you having a great time? And I'm like, you're yeah. terrifying, but like, yes, okay, all good, all good.